girlfriend from the first composition, the Holy Spirit speaking to the ear, the mother, who's not in the original story that Christ told, but I as an artist embraced the story again and told it again as the mother's professing and rejoicing the Holy Spirit flowing from her mouth. As I'll show you a tribe configuration of Christ, Christ carrying a cross and falling, Christ at Golgotha, a place of the skull, and the Trinity of crosses, and Christ the resurrected that went to Thomas, who was doubting that he came back. As I show you from the last compositional space, there's a key right here, which is our confession that flows from our lips shall unlock the key toward our salvation. And so the key is going into Christ's hand, which is a keyhole, is coming in from the other side of the compositional space. And as he's crying out, the father's arms wrapped around him. They've been wrapped in a swaddling scarf, a swaddling cloth of the Holy Spirit, embroidering them and pulling them together and commingling them and rebirthing their relationship. As Christ says, come unto me, all ye weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah. And that is basically what is in their peace. And at the top are names are written there. And those names are written in the Lamb's book. And those who will be called up to heaven, they will have a place because God has prepared a place for all of us to be okay. here. That's what we need to be working towards. Amen. The name of this piece is called Burning Hands, Second Lines of Michigan. I made this piece for Michigan and New Orleans, where at the same time we're going through some major issues. And the top right hand side of the conversational space is a 1950 Chevy Coupe, and these are our four horsemen of the apocalypse. There's a piece that's out there. They're called, yeah. it's called Flambeau. And you'll see one of my characters in one of the pieces. Remember, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I'm giving you a roadmap so you can read the pieces. This guy's here, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. I didn't want to say there were the four horsemen of the apocalypse because there were actually men riding horses. I conflated them, made them into one. That's being an artist. <laughs> and so in this composition, I had the four horsemen carrying the, the 50 Chevy Coupe away from the great site as if to rebirth it. As he goes and the guy is laying down the handkerchief, the handkerchief in New Orleans is a representation of the Holy Spirit. And you're like, well, how does that work? The white handkerchief, at funerals and at weddings, and particularly funerals, it got expensive for them to release the three white doves, so it got translated into a white handkerchief in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So when you see a person dancing with a white handkerchief, this is, you gotta suspend your imagination, and that's a bird flying. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're doing. They're making a bird fly, and so they begin to dance, and that's the Holy Spirit that's there at the funeral now. Mm -hmm. Once this was to wipe away the tears, now it becomes the implement of the dance, and they become the embodiment of the Holy Spirit. You follow? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, in this context, that person is a symbol of that person being dead, or being laid to rest. Remember I told you this piece is about a rebirth. In the middle, I put a white male on the drum. That was one of the more iconic guys in New Orleans that would beat on the drum. Um, and um, the bass drum, and then you would see the, the top hat on top there and so forth. Jazz music in New Orleans. It's a commingling of European and African traditions. European traditions, marching band traditions, and linear bass. African traditions are circular bass. So the two have collided to create this form, which we know is a unique formation, which is called jazz. The woman at the front, and the three women, one, two, three, the trinity of women inside of the compositional space. And in her hand, she's wielding a handkerchief that I just told you about, which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Anybody here from Michigan? Uh, what part of Michigan are you from? You could, you show, could you show us? Yes. Go up and show them. Go the show them. <laughs> 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 the Michigan people. Come on, yeah. come on up. And I want, I want you to point on the map. I want you to come, no, no, come up here. I want you to turn around and show people where you're from. He wishes he did one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I do that because I had asked somebody from Michigan. I said, why is there a history learning in the schools? <laughs> and the idea is that the Upper Peninsula part right here, the UP, is another nickname for it, it's the bird, and the bottom part right here is called the hand. Mm -hmm. And remember, I told you the name of the piece Bird in Hand, mm -hmm. second line for Michigan. Mm -hmm. Bird in Hand. Mm -hmm. So I took New Orleans tradition of the bird in hand, mm -hmm. and I took the Michigan tradition of the bird in hand and I tied them together to make the drawing, which happens to be 20 feet long. Wow. Oh, wow. And nine wow. feet tall. I couldn't bring this piece here. I tried to talk, I tried to talk him into let me bring this, and no, we don't have any space for it. <laughs> <laughs> I just kidding, I just said that. <laughs> I didn't talk about that. <laughs> 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 
I knew that I, you know, she told me this, they told me the space. Jane told me what, what the space was. I knew, I knew the dimensions of space. <laughs> but it's nine feet tall, it's uh, 20 feet wide. It's all done in graphite pencil. It took me 150 hours, um, 22 days, and 52 pencils. Yes, I counted everything. I, I literally came in every day and I, I marked a log on the wall and I had pencils laid out. I used the pencils down to nubs because I used this pencil extender and I got every bit out of the pencils. Did you have to do use an eraser at all? I rarely use erase because if I try erasing this paper, it actually shows up like a smudge. So mm -hmm. this is all built up across hatching. Mm -hmm. Just this. So oh, my hands going cool. like this. That's all. There is no blending, meaning I, I did no blending stump on the piece. Mm -hmm. All of it's. Now the eraser when I did use, I didn't use it to fix a mistake. I used it as a as a means to manipulate the graphite mm -hmm. and to create other kind of textural happenings. But I did it very rarely. I did it like here, 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 those kind of spaces like that. Mm -hmm. And on the right side, you can see there's like a slight textural change. Mm -hmm. But I use all the way from a two B to a nine B um, in terms of the drawing of the piece. Mm -hmm. And now I'm moving into some of the pieces that are based in community. And I'm about to end this talk. And then we go outside and we go have a little chat out there. So this piece here is a series of pieces I did for, I worked with a musician named Hannibal Lecumbe, and we created tw um, uh, nine pieces that commemorate the nine people slain at Mother Manuel Church mm -hmm. okay. in um, Charleston, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. These are the same stained glass windows of the Mother Manuel Church mm -hmm. formation that I used and created these panels for them. And we created this musical, I don't know, I guess it's a dramaturge kind of piece. So that's a, a show of them. They're all acrylic paint, they're all 12 feet tall, two feet wide, and uh, we use them in many different ways. They were in the church, like acted like stained glass windows, they were been on the altar, because we did them in two different places. We did in Philadelphia at Mother Bethel Church, which is the first AME church in the United States. Uh, it's the parent church to Mother, um, uh, Mother Emanuel. Mother Emanuel, one of the famous members that went there was Demar Vesey. Demar Vesey in 1822 was the one who was going to lead this one of the largest slave revolts in the United States, but someone in, internally told on what happened. They found him and 12 other co-conspirators that were doing this. They lynched them all, and then they actually burned down Mother Emanuel Church. Mm -hmm. One of the members of Mother Emanuel Church, one of the pastors there, left their church and went up to Mother Bethel Church in Philadelphia. So I found that history out when I went to Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And then we did this project also in New Orleans, Louisiana, at St. Augustine Church, which is one of the oldest Catholic, black Catholic churches in the United States down there in the Tremay area. Tremay, the oldest African-American municipality in the United States. Lots lots of history. Mm -hmm. So these are the panels, and each one of these represents the different people and the different characters about them. This is one of the steamroller prints. Mm -hmm. So you see me out in the street. We just ran the steamroller across it. This is for a project that I did with the community in Meadville, Pennsylvania. And Meadville is the home of where the zipper was created. The talent zipper company. Uh -huh. And so I, when I got to that town, the company had gone away like the 1970s. So basically, they hired me to, to do this project work with teens to try to help them build this teen center. And my, meanwhile, I've been getting text messages from one of the guys that they actually build a teen center. And these panels are actually being put into the actual building. So it's like, you know, that's the seeds that we do as artists. We leave those seeds wherever we go. We plant, we plant, we plant. We leave these kind of visual kind of messages around. It says me, we're one of the community members, and we're pulling up. Now, mind you, these are all individualized woodcuts mm -hmm. that will work with, we went through the community and work with kids virtually everywhere. I mean, I'm not talking about everywhere. We were at the park, we were at Active Aging, we were at the, um, um, the retirement homes, we were at women's, uh, women's um, services, we were at um, Home Depot, we were everywhere doing workshops. Mm -hmm. And we had free workshops for people to come out and they were using creating woodcuts. We create individualized woodcuts, we put them together like a giant puzzle piece. I created a zipper motif down the middle, and then when we printed it, this is what part of it looked like. Right now it's 100 feet long, that's only 48 feet of it right there that's being shown. But we did uh, over 100 feet of this, and we have almost 3,000 people already involved. It's 10,000 people in Meadville. So I, my, if I was stayed in Meadville, I would continue to try to get all 10,000 people involved in the project and just have one big giant long zipper. You know. Is that on paper? That's on paper. Okay. The last one, that's the block that's yeah. down there. Yeah. So all the blocks look like that, and then mm -hmm. the transfer. That was the green block. Um, that, that, of course, the black and white picture, but that was the green block. That one. And you cut that out of plywood? No. That was um, MDF, Medium Density Fiber Ward. Um, a lot of the furniture and a lot of housing needs and stuff. But anyway, it's like sawdust with glues and under binders and under pressure. And so that's what that was all cut out. I and mean, we ran it over the steamroller. I put blankets on top of that. 
and um, and ran across to make the prints. Wow. Yeah, it turned out, it just absolutely turned out beautiful. And then I showed the family back behind the zipper. Boom. Mm -hmm. So if you pull it back, what's behind that? What's revealed? Mm -hmm. So is it revealing or is it pulling together? It's doing both. Mm -hmm. That's that's the metaphor of the zipper. This is a project I did in, it's eight feet tall, eight feet square, eight feet square, shall you say. Um, it's a project I did at William and Mary. I did this <coughs> last year, this is pre-hire, pre that I got hired over at William and Mary to, to do my job at the museum that I told you when I was just kind of talking and so forth. But the piece is called Lemonade, and it's a tribute to the first three African Americans that are resident students at the College of William and Mary in 1967. So 51 years ago, mm -hmm. you had your first African Americans that were resident students at the School of William and Mary, which is the second oldest college in the United States. William Mary is 325 years old. 1693 is his founding year. And in 1967 was the first African Americans to be resident students on the campus. A hundred years ago, the first women to go to college. So just putting all this history together about this institution. That's where I'm working. <laughs> and but I, I work there and I'm probably working there, but I know that my life, my existence, my being there, Mm -hmm. I'm standing in the place of slaves who once worked at college and who were on that campus. I'm the replacement. Mm -hmm. And I'm living out those dreams that they had. I'm living, I'm the one who's able to get that education because they laid that foundation for me. Okay. So I gotta keep it going. Mm -hmm. You know, there there is no stop to this. You just yeah. gotta keep going, you gotta keep going, it's gotta be diligent, you gotta keep pushing. And so these are the three women we took masks mm -hmm. off of these, and these are the students that I work with because I didn't do it by myself. I work with, I taught a class for three weeks. This whole piece was done in three weeks. Acrylic paint, mm -hmm. wood cut, this the actual wood that's actually mounted to the board, and bronze casting. So we actually poured metal and made those masks in the bottom. Mm -hmm. This is a project I work with a woman named Leah Glenn, who uh, has a Leah Glenn dance theater, and she created a piece called The Youngest of Nine, which is for Colada Walls and Lanier. This piece, I'll express it a little bit more when we go outside, and I'll talk to you about the piece called Nine Little Indians. But Colada Walls and Lanier was the youngest member who entered the school that day in 1957 in Little Rock, Arkansas. She was 14 years old. So Leah took on her spirit and made a dance. I painted her dress and I painted these banners. There are actually eight of them. I don't, I don't have them showing here. And they all of those people. And these are direct pulls from my piece that you'll see out in mm -hmm. the other area. So when you see these figures, you, you're gonna see them again. Mm -hmm. And I just enlarged them to 12 feet tall. And this project I did at Christian High in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It's called Make Me Over. And I worked with kids there, uh, teens, and they did these woodcuts. Now, this is actually birch plywood. We did not do them yet. And I worked with them for a course of two weeks in January. Mm -hmm. And a uh, funny story about that, when I went to my friend JQ's house, his name is Jonathan Quips, I, got, I went there and I got caught in a blizzard on the way. It was right around Detroit. I got hit in this blizzard, and I was riding down the highway, and I knew things were really bad. When I went to change lanes and I went like this, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then your heart doing like this. Like, <gasps> I have no stopping power. <laughs> and I was driving a pickup truck. Fortunate thing about it, my back of my truck is loaded down with all the materials I going for the workshop. So that did keep me somewhat going, you know, grounded. But I knew not to change lanes. And I knew that maybe you have to look above. <laughs> stop. You know, but anyway, I get to his house and I'm walking across the street like this, and JQ comes out on his porch with a cup of coffee. Oh, Steve, you made it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm going to kill you. Anyway, that's a sidebar. But um, <laughs> this project I did in Louisville, Kentucky, and I was at um, Surgeon um, Community Church. And so I was invited to go there, and I went and I did this project with them. And I based it off the Station of the Cross. Those of you who know in terms of Catholicism, the Station of the Cross, the Christ Marshall Calvary. Um, I retold the story through a black man being falsely accused of a crime and put on death row. Mm -hmm. And so I told that story to them and I said, y'all may not believe or, or use this as your faith practice to change the station of the cross, but we can use the station of the cross as a means of meditation, as a means of prayer. So let's reflect on what it means to fall. What it means to be stripped of our garments. What does that mean? What does that feel like? Empathize with those people that, if you weren't you, empathize with people that were stripped empathize with people that did fall. And then how do we create an art piece out of that? So I had them create different pieces that came together and create these stained glass woodcut windows. And they were put into the church. And the church originally was a Catholic church, but they bought the church and they took the Station of the Cross elements out. So when they commissioned me to do the piece at the church, 
They said, you can do whatever you want. I said, can I put the station pros back? They said, do whatever you want. I said, cool. I love projects like that. <laughs> so, so I went back to there and I, and I created it and I created these different elements. So these like drops of Trice's blood, 14 drops. And that's when Christ was stripped of his garments and when Trice was killed on the cross, he was not killed on the cross with the nails, he was killed with the hypodermic needle and that's the lethal injection of the guy dying on death row. This is a big drawing called Who Is My Neighbor? It's nine feet tall, 14 feet wide, and it's probably like from here to the end of the wall, nine feet, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's all made of uh, Conte crayons, like a charcoal. Mm -hmm. All cross hatch, no blending, uh, no blending stone, none of that. Cross, 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 just built with tone. And I made this piece, and it's actually from a historical photograph at the March on Washington, 1963. White people and black people joined together and they were singing, We Shall Overcome. Mm -hmm. And behind them was the Lincoln Memorial. I took it out of the compositional space and I replaced it with these black people and those are figures in the back for those who can't see it. I made a little frisket and I took powder graphite and I rubbed and I made that whole pattern on the back, that entire drawing of, black, of, a, of a woman and a man because they were fighting against the shackles of slavery to create new links, new ties of community. That's part of our job. And this is one of the last pieces I'll leave you with. It is one of the pieces that are considered to be one of my iconic images that I've um, created, and it's um, called Living in Crystal. And it's the fact that we're all living letters. Mm -hmm. And it has a paraphrased scripture quote that comes from 2 Corinthians. And it states, I am a living epistle, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, mm -hmm. not in tables of stone, but in the fleshy tables of the heart. And in a belly, it says living water, because he that believed in me as the scripture shall see out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And around her is a trinity, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which circulates around her as she has her hand up in the air and one hand down. She is symbolically representing what many early Christians would do, they would walk the maze. And the maze was not something that was about some kind of wicked thing. It was a thing that they would do because they would walk it and they would pray. And when they were walking and pray, they would walk with their hands up. Because they would walk and they would surrender to what God mm -hmm. and they would pray what God is trying to tell them. Mm -hmm. And what word is they speaking into their lives. And once they got to the center of the maze, they would walk with their hands down <coughs> as a posture of acceptance of what God has spoken into their life. So she has her hands in both postures. One in the posture of listening, and one in the posture of receiving. Mm -hmm. It is my belief, brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. that if we dare face that dirge, it is the belief that we all, one day, join together 